We've looked at sizes of atoms already. Now we're going to look at what happens when an atom becomes an ion. And it's pretty much like you would think. Um, this is determined by if you have a crystal of an ionic compound, you can basically bombard it with x-rays. And depending on how they're ref um, reflected back and bent, um, basically it's math to figure out where the different nuclei are and how far apart they are. And from that, um, they can estimate, you know, and call, uh, you know, say what the size of the ion is. But anyway, so this is what you would think, that if, uh, an, if an atom gains electrons to become an anion, its radius will increase. And if it loses electrons, it will decrease. The size does depend on the number of energy levels, which kind of makes sense. You know, like for a atom like sodium, it just has one valence electron in its valence shell. And if it loses that one, which it normally would to become a um, positive one ion, then it's going to lose that whole shell. And uh, so it'll definitely be smaller because of that reason. The other reason, though, is that there is electron repulsion. If you have an atom uh, like sulfur that normally has six valence electrons, and um, you're going to have it, remember its charge is normally a minus two, so if it gains two from somewhere else, it's going to have more electrons in its valence shell. And so that highest energy level will expand kind of outward to uh, give it more room because the electrons repel. So one thing um, that we need to make sure you understand is that when we drew these energy levels, So when we drew the energy levels, we have a nucleus, and we're drawing these energy levels when we put the electrons on them. These energy levels are not fixed in space at a set distance at all. Um, and of course, they don't really, they're not really this shape, but it is true that as you go to higher ones, they get further away from the nucleus. But the size of these does vary with what else is there. It varies with the number of protons in the center, and it also varies with electrons. And so if you're adding electrons to the outside, it's all going to scooch outward to, to kind of accommodate that repulsion. Okay, let's try some examples. And if you want to pause me for a minute, you can and see what you can do with these. These first two, when we make these comparisons, they have the same number of protons, like the potassium ion and the potassium atom have the same number of protons. That's why it's still K there. Um, remember, the number of protons is, sets, is set by the, which element it is. So anyway, these have the same number of protons, that, so that won't affect things. What will affect things is that this potassium ion has one fewer electron. So if we remember that it's lost an electron, that means that this one, uh, the neutral atom, has more electrons so the neutral atom will be larger. On these, again, they have the same number of protons. The difference is the bromide ion has one more electron, so that will make it larger. And on these two, we kind of have another factor because definitely, as you go down on the periodic table, uh, iodide is definitely going to have more electrons than bromide, but it also has a whole nother um, energy level and by that it's going to that's going to make it bigger so what do you do if the two atoms or ions have the same number of electrons so these can have different numbers of protons though and so they're not exactly the same um, thing they're not the same entity so to speak um, so, for example, if we look at the potassium ion, the sulfide ion, and the chloride ion, and we figure out their electron configuration, let's look at our periodic table. 
we look on the periodic table, um, sulfur is here, but its electron configuration with two electrons would be argon. Chloride, again, it's here, but if it gains an electron, it has electrons like argon. And potassium as well over here, if it loses an electron, it has the configuration of argon. So all three of those have the same number of electrons. What makes them different is the number of protons. So you might want to think about what the number of protons is going to do to their size. So their electron configuration is argon. Again, um, what's different about them is the number of protons. So if we look on the periodic table, which one had the most protons? It was potassium. And would have having more protons make them smaller or larger? It would make them smaller. So um, because there, there's more positive charge pulling in those electrons in the center, so more uh, makes it smaller. And I should say of the three, it's the smallest. And then um, sulfur or sulfide has the least protons. So it's the largest. And on these questions, you have to kind of watch for the wording. If I'm doing increasing, that means I'm starting with the smallest. And then my middle size is my chloride, and my largest was my sulfide. So if we're looking at atoms or ions that are isoelectronic, the one with the least protons will be the largest.